In this next movie, we're going to look a little bit at the HDRI functionality and a few other features of V-Ray RT. I've loaded up this car scene file, and what I'd like to show you first is the um, active shade with the car. So I'll activate my perspective view, and this view should catch up pretty quickly. One thing that's kind of funny about V-Ray RT is that it will not respect your environment lighting or your default lights. That is, the settings that you have here in your uh, V-Ray globals uh, to keep the lighting off. Right now the scene has no lights in it, and yet GI is enabled, and we're still seeing a very well-lit car. Further, uh, we um, don't have any environment on, but if we turn this on, you'll notice that it's not having any effect at least not with this version of V-Ray RT. So when you want to have a skylight, you have to take a different approach. Um, as soon as we put a light in the scene, of course the default lights go away. So if I go over here and create a V-Ray light, I'll just make a, a default light here just on the ground pointing down. And as soon as I do that, the car goes black. It's got this white environment to reflect, but otherwise it's not receiving any light. The light is on the ground. So to switch this to the type of light that you need to make an environment light, we switch the type to dome. And by default, this is going to be much, much too hot for a non-V-Ray camera. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring the multiplier down to more like what an environment light would be at 1.0. And we're getting a lot more of the sort of standard effect of a 1.0 environment. Um, down here, we need to enable the spherical to give it sort of a, a full dome effect. Now, for an HDR environment, we can simply select the Use Texture and tell it to use a V-Ray HDRI map. Which map will I use? Well, I thought I would use this one from the DOSH collection. I have a uh, number of HDR collections on Trinity3D.com, and DOSH has some excellent ones. One is called Car Backgrounds, and this is a collection of uh, 28 HDRs for... Uh, hundred and twenty five dollars and some of these can make some really nice environments for cars so to apply that I've already copied a few over to my hard drive I'll just drag and drop this V-Ray HDRI to my material editor as an instance and then whenever I change here changes there and um, I've got a few of them right here in this folder and as soon as I select that the art real-time scene lights up again this is supposed to be in a spherical environment. Currently, I am only using my local machine for rendering. If I go to Active Shade, go to RT and Render Servers, you'll notice all of my render assisting servers are disabled. So here in this shaded view, uh, you can see this car is reflecting all of the HDR environment. In fact, I can even um, rotate the hemisphere around a little if I want to look at it from a different angle. And you can see the effect this has on the lighting on the car. Let's go ahead and put a um, plane underneath the car so it's got something to catch the light. And I'll, I'll just give this a simple white material as a starting point. and uh, now we can see a little bit of what that's doing. Well, we may like the way the HDRI lights are seen, but you may want to use a different background, so let's try that out next. I will uh, temporarily disable the active shade and I'll, I'll bring this down to kind of favor the uh, active shade view for the next time I enable it and in my material editor I will um, assign this asphalt to the ground plane let's see what that looks like in the view there okay and um, then I will change out my environment to something other than the HDR image so what I need to do is tell the um, dome light to be invisible. When I do that, we'll be able to see out to whatever the environment is.
So checking invisible, and we're back into a giant white room. We go to rendering, environment, and set this to just a simple bitmap. It'll prompt me for a bitmap, and I have one ready. It's uh, also from DOSH. It's from the DOSH Skies collection, and you can see it's just a big uh, open desert. So it takes it a second to load, and we'll need to drop this into the material editor also. But all of this is going in real time into our V-Ray RT. So uh, now that I've got this up, I'll bring up my material editor, drag and drop the skies into a swatch, and we'll tell it it's a spherical environment. You can see the image is supposed to be spherical. By default, it comes up with screen coordinates. If you'd like to orbit around the scene a little bit now, we can take a look at that. I'll use C to get low. The C uh, button takes you down in elevation. And um, you can trade out materials. I have a uh, one ready to change up the car body rather easily, just with the hues shifted for this multi-layered material. This is an orange uh, metallic flake. If I bring up the, ma the material tree for this, you can see how this material works. It's using um, the um, V-Ray two-sided material, and it has some fall-off maps to get kind of a, a yellowish effect. Actually, I have a better orange over here. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Let's put that on there. This one does a little bit better job of getting yellow where the sunlight's hitting it the hardest. Next I'll show you how to use the depth of field function in real time.